Hey everyone, in this video we're going over the HC SR501 PIR sensor with adjustable time delay and sensitivity. Alright, before we get too far ahead, let's talk about how the sensor works. Essentially, there will be a motion sensor which will activate and send a positive voltage through the output pin whenever motion is detected. This will be done by the PIR sensor within the lens and essentially as motion is detected, it will send that output positive voltage for a time period by defined by you know the settings, which we'll go into detail now. So here we have the sensor, and as mentioned before, you have a time delay adjustment setting and a sensitivity adjustment setting. What this allows is the time delay is it will define how long will the positive voltage from the output pin stay on after motion has been detected. And we will look at that in detail in our example. And then the sensitivity adjustment basically will define how easily it's for the sensor to get activated, or how easily will motion be detected. Now the pins, you have the ground, the VCC, and output. Ground and VCC are simply your negative and positive to get the sensor to work, while the output will be the signal that comes out of the sensor to indicate when motion has been detected. So let's now look at the circuit. Um, we have the breadboard on the right, the circuit on the left, and you can see clearly highlighted the ground, VCC, and output of this sensor, specifically our AC SR501. So we mentioned that you would get a positive voltage out of the pin. So as you can see in the highlighted section, that will induce a positive current through the resistor that is connected to that output and thus will go into the base of our NPN transistor, specifically a 2N2222. When we do this, the way transistors work is it will induce a current from the collector to the emitter, which will in turn, for this specific circuit, activate the rest of the circuit. Doing so allows current to flow through the LED and also allows the buzzer to get activated and emit a noise or a sound, which in this case for a specific example will be a representation of um, simply the sensor being activated or the output pin being activated. For however long that output pin stays activated, you will see the LED light up and you will hear the buzzer make a sound. So now let's go into an example. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this example. I will put my hand across the sensor and you will see the LED light up and the buzzer make a sound. Now let's go ahead and adjust the time delay. You can see that if we maximize the time delay, the output will stay on for a long time. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at a graph so you can see the voltage going into the transistor base and get a visual for the time delay from the sensor. You can clearly see the peaks associated each time that the sensor detected the motion. Now let's go ahead and increase that time delay. Now, what if we actually wanted to use our HCSR501 PIR sensor with an Arduino? And here we have a breadboard schematic and we'll show you how that would work. We would connect, as done previously, the negative and positive terminals of the sensor to a positive and negative uh, terminals of our breadboard. Then the output pin of the sensor would go to a digital input output terminal in the Arduino. In this case we'll go to input number two and then we'll take an output from the digital input output terminals in the Arduino. With this specifically we're using number six and that goes to the breadboard. That will then connect to the positive terminal of the LED which then connects to a resistor which goes back to ground. 
In this case, we're using a 220 ohm resistor, which is appropriate to light up this LED. Then remember that we also take the Arduino and connect it to the common ground. All right, let's now go ahead and let's take a look at our code with an Arduino IDE. So here we are in Arduino IDE and we will start by initializing the variables that we will use to define our inputs and outputs that we previously reviewed in the breadboard schematic. So we will go ahead and start by defining the PIR or the sensor as an integer. So we cite int for integer. And then we'll write PIR equals two. And close off that statement. And then for comments, I'm saying general input output number two, and have some comments like digital input coming from PIR HC, sorry, HC SR501. We'll do the same now for the output, and we'll call it LED. We'll set it equal to six and close off that statement. After that, we will initialize the state for the PR at zero. So we'll call it PAR underscore state equals zero and close of that statement. And that is just so we can have something ready for um, our void loop. So now we go into the void setup and in here we just set up code that's only going to run once and not continuously. So here we write pin mode to define whether it's going to be an input or an output. We input here PIR, which is number two, which is our input. So we define it as an input. And then we just add the comment set pin as an input. We do the same now for the LED, except we input LED and call it an output. And then we close these brackets, which now takes us into the loop, which is what's going to run continuously. So we first define or redefine PIR state, which is the same thing we defined previously. And we'll define it as digital read PIR. So this is saying, let's read the digital input on pin number two, which is PIR, which is what we talked about earlier in our breadboard schematic. We're gonna say if that equals to one, which basically means if the sensor is sending a positive signal or a positive voltage or Basically, if it detected motion, we will set digital write for the LED as high, which basically means turn on the LED. Else, which means when the state is not one, or basically when there's no motion, digital write will be set for the LED to low, which basically means turn off the LED. We then close the brackets for the else and also close it for the loop. And this essentially ends our review of the code. It's pretty simple. Something key to remember is that you have properly set up your Arduino board with an Arduino IDE. Here I have it as an Arduino Uno. And I made sure I'm in the right communication portal. So COM3 is what I have. All right, so now we're ready to test the Arduino code that we just wrote. So. I'll be sliding my hand in front of the PIR sensor that will activate the output pin, which will send the signal to the digital input on the Arduino, which will then, through the logic we just wrote, write a positive output through the output number 6, which will then in turn turn the LED by flowing current through the LED and the resistor. And as you can see, every time I put my hand in front of it, we get the LED to light up. And as soon as we take it out, it comes off. So this concludes this video. Um, I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.